Good day YouTube, continuing on with the series on my electrical system, we're going to have a look at the battery isolator in this episode. This is my battery isolator, it's automatic, I don't know about anyone else but I have always had trouble with the manual switching. The idea of the manual battery isolator is that you turn the switch to say one which is your engine battery and start your engine then you turn it to both while you're running so that it charges both batteries then you turn it to two when you stop so that you're using your house battery then you turn it back to one to start your engine then you turn it back to both while you're running then <laughs> you turn it off when you get back to the ramp 99 times out of 100 I forget one of those changes to the point where I generally just leave it run on both when I'm just going out for the day. We've got this boat now, it's a bigger boat, we're going to overnight in it. I'm going to set it up properly so that the batteries are properly isolated and all the switching is automatic. This is going to allow me to charge the engine battery first. Once it's charged it'll automatically switch over to the house battery and when that's charged it will automatically switch over to my trolling batteries. And that's where the uh, troll bridge comes in. It allows me to charge the 24 volt batteries or a 12 volt alternator by switching them into parallel while it's charging. And again, that's all automatic. I don't have to worry about any of this. I'll always have a battery that's able to start my motor. That's the whole concept here. I don't want to get stuck out in the sea without any way of starting the engine because my batteries run flat because I forgot to turn the switch over manually. And I know I'm not alone because I've been out with other boaties and every single one that I've been out with has turned their switch on to both and left it there. I'm not sure whether they don't know any better or whether it's just going out for the day they do what I do and just switch it on to both. This is what I want and what everyone should have when they're going overnight in a boat if they don't want to run out of battery. It's got zero voltage loss either in isolating or charging mode. It's intelligent, so it's got software control of switching over what it's charging. It's got status indicators to tell you what it's doing, but you've got to crawl in under the seat where I'm going to mount it to see that, but that's fine. Ignition controlled and easy installation. Well, yes, it is, really. It's not a complex piece of equipment. Comes with your warranty card, comes with a instruction manual, comes with some nice covers over your terminals, and this is a unit here, I'm trying to do this single handedly so I can video it at the same time and I'm finding it a bit awkward, there we go, that'll do. So that's it there, you can see the status indicators there and it allows me to connect the motor positive there and three battery banks there, one, two and three. I'm just going to set up the earth wire here to go and connect the 24 volt battery across to the 12 volt banks. Just check that the bolt hole is big enough in this terminal. And yes, here's good size. Probably should put a bit of a heat shrink on there first. This heat shrink's a bit big, but what I've got, so it'll have to do. This heat shrink is, has got an epoxy glue inside it, so when it uh, shrinks down, the epoxy melts and forms a watertight seal. And that's what we don't want to happen. One of those wires, a couple of those wires came out. Give me another twist up. That's better. Now we use a different set of crimpers for these. And again, give it a real good tug. Make sure that won't come off. And then, once we're there, we want to slide this up so that it covers, see that hole in the, I don't know if you can see it in the video, I hope you can. Little hole in the end of this. I don't know why they put them there, but it's a source of moisture, so I want to push this up so that this covers the hole, but it doesn't cover the terminal itself, so we can still get a good contact on it. I don't want to come up there and half cover the terminal. I want the bolt to have a full contact on it. If necessary, I can get a standing knife and trim that. But for the moment, let's get a hot air gun on it. So this tube's a, a bit on the large side for this job. Once we're getting a bit snug there, I will have to trim it with the uh, Stanley knife. As I say, once we're getting a bit snug there, I can let go and get my hand out of the way because this hot air gun does get very hot. And be careful where you put your hot air gun down because it will burn through stuff. Let's grab the Stanley knife and trim that before it gets completely set. Putting the lid back on this container so I can use it as a cutting board. I 
Okay, well, there you go. Nicely sealed up, all epoxied on, and no moisture is going to get into that. So there's nothing to corrode the wire, and that will last a lot longer. Now, before I do the other end, I'm going to measure how much I need because I want enough slack to be able to slide the batteries out, but I don't want that much, it's just wasted wire. Better to throw the wire in the scrap heap and have it just laying around the boat carrying uh, high amperage. And here I am cutting up some marine ply to make brackets for these things. This is the same principle as in the stern saver that I've shown in a previous video. I don't want to drill any holes through the boat if I can help it. So what I'm doing is cutting these brackets out of uh, marine ply. I'm going to varnish it so that it endures the elements. And I'm going to use some existing bolt where the existing isolator switch is mounted to mount one of the brackets. And on the other side, when I get around to doing that, I'm just going to glue the marine ply to the inside of the boat and screw into that so that I don't have any holes in the fiberglass. This is the special isolator switch that I've got to go with the new battery setup. It's different from the normal isolator switches in that it keeps two batteries completely separate. So when I turn it on, each battery is on its own circuit. If you can see that there, we've got an engine battery and a house battery. They're on their own circuit, but if in an emergency, I can combine the batteries. So rather than being one, two, or both, as most isolators are, this is both on, one for the engine, one for the house, or combine them, and then I can use them to start the engine if the engine battery happens to be a bit flat. It's a special unit for a special job. That, together with the isolation circuits that I've got and the toll bridge, is going to be my complete battery setup. I'm going to mount my Pro Mariner on this board, which then gets mounted on the boat. Again, the whole idea is not to put any extra holes in the boat that I don't need to. Got this switch here that's going to mount as well and put it down the bottom so it's easier to reach. Hopefully that's all going to fit quite nicely in where it's going to go. I could have done this a bit simpler and a bit cheaper had I known that the Yamaha 150 has its own isolator circuit which means I could have bought a separate line out, well I will be bringing a separate line out to charge and connecting it to this while the normal charging goes to the engine battery. I only needed two charging circuits off this, not three, so I bought the one that had three charging circuits off it. I only needed to have one, so that's a bit of a shame, but never mind, it's done as done, it'll all work. That's everything mounted on the board. The Pro ISO charge is mounted on the board along with the special isolation switch, which doesn't combine normally. It can make it combine, but normally it just switches the two battery banks on and off. Holes are drilled ready to mount it up in there where the old switch was. Nothing special about the board. I could have done a better job if I'd had more time. Unfortunately, I was under a bit of time pressure because we want to go out this weekend. I've got a few more wires to get ready and go on. Once it's on, I'll try and get the camera in and show you how it's wired. If not, I'll draw a diagram and put it in the video. I had to put this switch into position and then crawl around the back but wire it all up. I've wired the engine side up to switch positions one and the house battery up to switch positions two. As you can see, the isolator is almost fully wired. This isolator handles three batteries, and I bought that because at the time I was planning to have three extra battery banks, but I've decided to just go with two extra batteries. So I've got one terminal that's not going to be connected to any battery banks. What I'm going to do with that is I'm going to connect two of the terminals together. I'll connect the terminal that's servicing the trolling motors to that spare terminal, and that way it will read the trolling motor batteries when it checks to see if any batteries need charging. So those two terminals will effectively charge the same bank. Now the reason for doing that is to give the electronics inside the Pro ISO charge something to read when it goes to check that other terminal. If there's no connection there, it's nothing to read. If there is a connection there, it will read the charges in the Mincota batteries and I think that'll be a better solution. And here's another area that I couldn't get a camera into to show you what I was doing. It's up under the gunnel, a little bit back from the throttle on the driver's side. Two of these bullet connectors are for the key switch that starts the motor, and you've got to identify which two they are. 
so that you can splice into them and take some very light leads off to the pro iso charge so that it knows when the motor's on and it knows that it shouldn't start doing its thing then. And there it is, a finished installation. I put a jumper in between batteries one and three because I ended up not using battery three. I had intended to when I bought this, but I decided to change the installation a little bit and didn't use battery three. So I put a jumper in between one and three so that the pro mariner would think that it had already charged when it looked at battery three. So it's only really charging one and two. And that one there, you see, lead from the isolated charger on the uh, Yamaha. Uh, house battery, trolling batteries, and this one links back to the house battery. So house battery gets priority basically for charging, and trolling motors get uh, charged when the house battery is charged. And that makes sense because the house battery is I think 550 CCA, 558 CCA, which is probably around 80 amp hours, somewhere in that vicinity. And the trolling motor batteries are 130 or 140 amp hours, so they'll last a lot longer. They shouldn't need as much charging, even on a weekend's use. So I am hoping that this will work out all right. Uh, it just depends how much running around we do between using the trolling motors, I guess. And that remains to be seen. So there you go, that's it. I have three banks of batteries and an electrical system that will make sure they're all charged in the most important order. The batteries that are the most important to me get charged first, and then the others. Love the peace of mind that gives me out on the water. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you got something out of it for your boat. I'll put some links in the description below for the bits and pieces I used in putting my electrical system together. If you'd like to see more of my videos, go to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time, good fishing.